I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. I went to uh, high school in, in Salt Lake City. There were, there were uh, uh, a handful of us that uh, uh, were interested in, in technical pursuits. We all ended up leaving Utah to go away to school to Harvard or Stanford or Caltech. Uh, Caltech was smaller, good weather, Southern California versus winters in Boston. It was, it was an easy decision. And I took numerical analysis from John Todd. That got me involved in, in the, the, kind of the kind of mathematics that involves computing. And I got an A plus, and I took advanced calculus from a guy named Knowles, and I got a B minus. So uh, that uh, pointed my direction to the more applied aspects of mathematics. This is the only place I applied to grad school was to go to Stanford. At Stanford, uh, when I got there, they had a Burroughs 220. We got an IBM 7090 and also DEC's first computer, the PDP-1. So my degree is in mathematics, but my affiliation is with the computer science department there. My thesis was about matrices. Uh, that's when I was really getting involved in, in, uh, in working with matrices. ICEPAC stands for Eigenvalue Package. Jim Wilkinson in, from um, National Physical Laboratory in England was the world's leading authority on matrix computation. So the ICEPAC project was a project to translate Wilkinson's algal programs into Fortran, where they could be widely used, and then certify that they could be used, run them on a number of different computers, uh, and make sure that they all worked there. LinPack, the algorithms were well established, but we just wanted to produce a, uh, a, a package of Fortran subroutines that uh, could be used in conjunction with IcePack. LinPack ac accidentally sort of became a be benchmark. Uh, when we did the original testing of LinPack, uh, we had uh, we sent our the programs to a couple of dozen universities and laboratories, and asked them to run all their programs to make sure it work on their computers. We also asked them to time one program, and. Don Garrick kept track of those times and they became the LINPAC benchmark. Today, LINPAC is known as a benchmark. While I was working on LINPAC and ICEPAC, I was also teaching courses at the University of New Mexico and I wanted to have my students be able to use LINPAC and ICEPAC without writing Fortran programs. So I wrote the first version of MATLAB as a kind of simple calculator. Two companies in Palo Alto that had spun off the Stanford Double E department developed commercial products using my MATLAB as, as the basis. With my permission, I was excited about them doing it. Uh, one, of those, uh, one of those products was a product called Control C and the control engineer that developed was a guy named Jack Little. Uh, Little, Little came to me in um, 1983 and said he wanted to start a company based on MATLAB. And I says, great, let's do it. We started MathWorks uh, in California in 1984. There are several aspects of MATLAB that made, it, that made it catch on. First of all, the mathematics, the computation with matrices and the computation with differential equations. Another aspect of it was the interactivity. We just take that for granted today where everybody has their own laptop. But back then, people were still submitting batch jobs to uh, central, uh, central computer centers in their in their laboratory or university. What's the most remarkable thing is the easy answer. It's how much it's permeated into all these different, different uh, enterprises. Hearing aids, DNA, finance, Rover running around on Mars has software generated by MATLAB controlling it. 
the satellite that flew past Pluto, they had to adjust its orbit. So they simulate that in MATLAB and adjust the orbit and then send up new instructions. When I get an award, uh, it's an award for MATLAB, more than just a personal award for me. So those are proud moments.